Praise God, praise God. I pray you have had a blessed New Year's Eve. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I have a lot to praise God for in the year of 2019. He has carried me through many valleys, through many mountains, valleys, ups and downs, highs and lows. He's been there through it all. He's dried every tear. He's lifted my head. He's given me strength like David. He said, by my God, he has caused me to uh, run through a, a troop and leap over a wall. He can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ever could think or ask. And I thank God that he has been my all in all in 2019. And I know that greater things is coming in 2020. Praise God. I do believe 2020 is going to be a phenomenal year. I believe great and mighty things will happen in the year of 2020. For some, it'll be a time of sorrow. And for others, it will be a time of rejoicing. Praise God. And uh, I just want to share a couple things the Lord has deposited in my spirit concerning the year 2020 and entering in the year of 2020. I uh, believe with all my heart the Lord has given me a word, and I believe that this will bless your heart. It's just a couple simple thoughts, but I just want to share it with you today concerning 2020 you know i want to enter tw in 2020 being the salt of the earth and letting my light shine praise god into those dark places because that's what god has called us to be we're all called to be so winners we're all called to be witnesses and we're all called to be the salt of the earth and to let our light shine praise god and i want to read this with you matthew chapter 5 and 13 it says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savior Wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden down under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. How many know if you are full of the light and full of the love of God, it cannot be hid. It will overflow. David said, My cup overflows. Praise God. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all them that are in the house. Praise God. Be a light to all them that are, in, that are in your house. And in 2020, I want to be a light to my children and to my husband. Praise God. As a mother, praise God, I want to be that light. I want to be that Proverbs 31 virtuous wife. Praise God. It says in verse 16, let your light so shine before men. Let it so shine before men. Let your light shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. How many know that Jesus wants to get the praise and the honor and the glory from our life? Praise God. And when people see the true light, praise God. And that light touches them in that dark place. They will glorify the Father. Praise God. You know, and uh, I can't help but to notice here in the book of Matthew, Jesus is teaching the Beatitudes. It's teaching the healing ministry of Jesus, the Beatitudes, the salt of the earth, and uh, to be the light of the world. Praise God. And I begin to think about how Jesus teaches on lust and uh, giving and oaths and forgiveness and divorce. And he teaches on many things. But he's also teaching there's a separation between the children of God and someone that that has been born again than the world there's a separation you know the new testament teaches us to put off the old man and his deeds in the works of flesh praise god and jesus is teaching us praise god uh, to have that character of god to forgive to have love praise god and i just couldn't help but to notice that and i thank god that he never let me stay the same the love of god pardoned my sins he didn't let me stay the same but he uh praise god brought me to the knowledge of truth and then he cleansed me and forgive me and redeemed me. But, there, but um, you know, there's no other place I'd rather be in the presence of God and getting things right with God. We have got to get right with God in this hour. And the word of God teaches us if we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness. And over and over again, I begin to see this separation from uh, just uh, in, in the word of God, you know, Jesus is teaching uh, the, the disciples. He said, be not like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said that harlots would enter in the kingdom of God before they were because they were religious. They were rebellious, you know, and I just begin to think about the word of God. And we must be a doer of the word. And then right after Jesus is teaching, let your light so shine before men that you may see your good works and, the, and glorify your 
Father which is in heaven, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till it be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men to do so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed ab above the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, there's a separation there. Praise God. You know, we got to make up our mind to get on the Lord's side. And you know, I'm going to talk about being in a valley of decision. You know, I'm going to get into the word of God. Praise God, and I believe this will bless your heart. But I begin to think about being the salt of the earth and being the light of the world. And then Jesus goes down and he said, It's not enough to teach the commandments, but you got to do the commandments and teach them. Then you'll be great in the kingdom. And he says, the, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious, oh, they teach them, but they don't live them. Praise God. And I begin to, to flip over again as I begin to study the word of God today. I begin to flip over to Mark 9 and 49. And it says, have salt in yourselves. That began to minister to me. Have salt in yourselves. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltness, wherein shall it season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. You know, I begin to look into this. You know, in Leviticus 2 and 13, it talks about offerings must have salt. But I begin to look into, number one, salt is valuable. Number two, salt and water are connected to healing. Praise God. There is, you can use salt in ways for healing. Uh, number three, salt per preserves. Number four, salt is flavor. Number five, salt is used for offering. Number six, Salt is uh, involved in the covenant, Second uh, Chronicles 13 and 5. But I begin to think about how salt and fire purifies, praise God. And I begin to think about this, how, how salt uh, pre preserves. And, you know, we uh, have to be preserved in the Lord. We have to be purified. You know, we're going through a time where the Lord is purifying us. He is getting us ready for the great day of the Lord. He's getting us ready for revival, for a move of the Spirit, the manifestations of the sons of God. You know, and I begin to think about how salt purifies. And I begin to think about fire, how it bur burns away uh, praise God, and it burns away uh, precious metals from the ground, and it says it, uh, it's mixed and, and with iron and many other metals, subjecting them to the fire, purifies the gold and silver, separating it from iron and other metals. I begin to look on the internet about how fire purifies, praise God, and it takes away that that's not needed, the, uh, the, the irons and other metals, to make it real gold, to make it real silver. And, you know, that's why we go through the fire and through tests and trials and tribulations. You know, the Lord is testing us and he's birthing character in us and we're, he's teaching us lessons and we're learning to trust in him, we're learning to love him. Him. We're learning to love our neighbor, to love our enemies. We're learning, praise God, to gird up the loins of our mind, to guard our souls, the gateways to our soul, to guard our mouths. You know, I begin to think about how he is purifying us right now. You know, judgment comes to the house of God first. And that's why he is warning us and he is purifying us right now. Praise God. And he's preserving us for the things to come, the things to come in 2020. Praise God. You know, and I begin to think about how in Malachi 3 uh, and chapter 3 and 2 through 3, it says "Be uh, to, he is purifying the people. And I begin to think about that. I begin to think about uh, the book of Malachi. Praise God. The book of Malachi. God begins to expose their sin and their corruption. Praise God. And then after he exposes their um, corruption, he begins to confront them. Praise God. And he begins to have a conversation with them. And they begin to, begin to deny the accusations. And he begins to talk about idolatry and divorce. Praise God. And they weren't paying their tithes and they weren't being faithful and sold out to the Lord. Praise God. And I begin to, to think about 
how God began to minister to them in the book of Malachi. And he began to tell them, he said, if you'll return unto the Lord, I will return unto you in Malachi 3 and 7. And in the New Testament, it says, draw nigh to God and I will draw nigh to you. Pur purify your hands, you cleaners. Cleanse your, cleanse your hands, purify. And uh, But the Lord began to speak to them. Uh, and he said, draw nigh to the Lord and he will draw nigh, re return unto the Lord, excuse me, and I will return unto you. You know, we got to return unto the Lord with all of our hearts. And I began to think about how the Lord began to, to move through Malachi and through that burden with the word to purify them. You know, and I began to think about Joel. The Lord gave me a word on fasting and praying the other day on Joel. Joel reflects Malachi and Amos and Isaiah and Zephaniah. You know, in chapters 1 and 2, Joel focuses on the day of the Lord. And he begins to talk to him about the locust came, you know, uh, on on Egypt. But how the locust is going to come upon the children of Israel for their sin. And he begins to call the priest to, to have the people to come to a national repentance. And then he, and then he begins to talk about another day of the Lord where the sun will be darkened and the moon shall uh, lose its light and the stars shall fall from the heaven from the heavens and he talks about the day of the Lord and then he calls for another national day of repentance and he says rend your garments and not your heart he's saying let this change be real let it let it be with inside of you and be a doer of the word and not a hearer only rend your heart and not your garment because in the Jewish customs they would lay in sackcloth and ashes and they would rend their garments when they were mourning but he said rend your heart and not your garment and he's talking about the day of the Lord praise God and I begin to think about how he promises in Joel restoration, divine presence among his people, revival, you know, repentance bursts revival. God's spirit, praise God, will be poured out upon all flesh. You know, it makes me think about in Ephesians, uh, praise God, the manifestations of the sons of God. You know, and uh, I begin to think about how Joel ends with uh, a new Eden and the, and the story of, of God's people being redeemed. And God restored all things at the cross at Calvary. Praise God. And I begin to think about, praise God, I begin to think about the word of God. You know, and, and, and they were in the valley of decision. You know, I begin to think about that too. Uh, they were in the valley of decision. Praise God. And you know, I see many in the valley of decision in the time that we're living in now. Praise God. But we got to choose this day whom we're going to serve. And we got to make up our mind if we are on the Lord's side. Praise God. And uh, I just want to... Um, I just begin to think about too. I want to point this out. You know, it says... Uh, we must have salt within ourselves, praise God. You know, and if the salt loses its flavor, it's to be good for nothing, to, but to be thrown out and trodden down under the foot of men. You know, there is no substitute for, for real salt. And I begin to think about how it says if it loses its flavor, it's good for nothing. You know, Jesus is the light of the world. He's the light of my life and the light of uh, a believer's life. And uh, he nothing can take his place. And, you know, nothing can take the place of the true and anointing you know the the real anointing is authentic we're to be genuine to be authentic to be the light of the world praise god nothing in this life can take the lord's place we see a lot of imitation praise god but you know there's going to be some real a remnant of real authentic children of god take its place in the in the army in the day of 2020 a real remnant an army of believers let the worshipers arise let the sons and daughters prophesy praise god and you know i begin to think about we are the salt of the earth in the light of the world, we must reach others in a lost in a dark times that we're living in, in these dark times. Praise God. I begin to think about Mark 9 and 50. It says, keep salt in yourselves. Praise God. And then I begin to think about. Um, how it says, if you have salt within yourselves, you will have peace with others. You know, I begin to think about how I want to go in 2020 living peaceable and have peace with all men. You know, I begin to think about that. Praise God. And in Romans 12 and 18, it says, live peaceably. Praise God. In Colossians 3 and 15, it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Matthew 5 and 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. John 14 and 27, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. 
James 3 and 18, a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So I want to enter in 2020 being a peacemaker. I want to be enter in 2020 being a salt of the earth. I want to enter in 2020 letting my light shine to those that are in dark places. It goes past the microphone, past the videos, past, you know, being uh, in any type of a spotlight or any type of a position, just loving people, forgiving my enemies, praying for others. Praise God, having the gifts of help. Praise God. I want to be a light in this dark world. Praise God. And uh, I just want to uh, share a few more thoughts with you. I begin to look up where Jesus says, you know, my peace I give, my peace I leave with you. You know, I begin to look up John 20, 20, you know, because we are entering in 2020. And I don't know about you. But I, I want to enter, enter in 2020 with 2020 vision. And the word of God says, praise God. Praise God. With that in Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Come on, somebody. I want to enter in 2020 with a vision, a vision for God ordained by God to reach all the souls that it's ordained for me to reach. Praise God or minister to or encourage to love on to hug whatever God has. Praise God. I want to enter in 2020 being that yielded vessel. Praise God. But I begin to look up John. I want to read this to you, 2020. Praise God. I want to have the God. How many knows that God can give you 2020 vision that only comes from the Lord? John 2020 says, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side, where the disciples were glad. And when they had saw the Lord, so he begins to show them the scars in his hands and in his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. How many know that one day we're going to see the Lord? And I want to enter in 2020, praise God, with vision. And I want to enter in 2020 serving the Lord with gladness. Because the word of God says, look up, redemption draweth nigh. Ever I shall see him. And those that pierced him shall mourn. Praise God. We're, and the word of God says, we shall see him for who he is. I believe we're going to see him more than ever. Praise God through revival, through a move of the spirit but we're going to see him one day in that place that's not prepared by man's hands but walls of jasper and streets of gold with a river flowing praise god and be uh, shouting around the throne of god dancing around the throne of god forever and i begin to read on down john 20 and 20 uh i begin to read john 21 and Jesus said, Peace be unto you. My Father has sent me, so even I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. For whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted, and unto them... And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. You know, I begin to think about how he breathed on them. And he began to move for them. Praise God. And uh, he began to fill them with his spirit. And he gave them the great commission. Praise God. And I begin to think about that. And I begin to think about Luke 10, 19. I want to enter in 2020. Uh, praise God. Under the anointing of God. The unction of God. And in, in authority. Rise up. Take position. Know your identity. Know that you have a key to the kingdom. Praise God, Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Praise God, and notwithstanding uh, in rejoice not that spirits are subjected unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I don't want to love ministry more than I love Jesus. I want to rejoice because my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. But I want to tell you today, you have power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. Jesus breathed on the disciples. He breathed on the disciples in John 20 and 21, and he gave them power. Thank God there's power in salvation, power in prayer, power in the word, power in the Holy Ghost. Thank God. And I want to encourage you today, and this is what the Lord has given me. A few thoughts in, in for 2020. There's going to be great and mighty things take place.
And I want to encourage you all to pray and to fast. We're going to do a corporate fast with our church, praise God. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited to fast. I'm excited to, to rend my heart, not my garment. And I want to encourage you, praise God. We got to do all we can while we can. And we got to get it right while we can. The Word of God says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. The Word of God says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray seek my face turn from their sin and their wicked ways then we'll hear from heaven then you'll hear from heaven and we'll heal the land you know we can't hear from god if we're in a place of sin if we're in a, in a place of be, in de, believing a lie strong delusion but we got to have our hearts right praise god because only the pure in heart shall see god and i just want to encourage you all today and i pray that you have a blessed uh new year and i just praise the lord for all he's done in 2019 i Praise God, and I'm ready uh, for revival. I'm ready to enter in 2020, fasting and praying. I know we did it last year. We entered in 2019, fasted the whole month of January, and the Lord kept us, praise God, through many valleys and storms and mountains and ups and downs and highs and lows, and prayer and fasting moves the heart of God. And I shared a video the other day in Joel. Uh, it says, call ye a, a fasting and prayer. And uh, let's read that again real quick. It's in Joel 2 and 12. And it says, Therefore now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with your whole heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rend your hearts and not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and repenteth him of evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind, even a meat offering and drink offering unto the Lord our God. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people and sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, the children. Praise God. And he begins to say, Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. Give not the heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Praise God. We, we're in a valley of decision. We have got to make up our mind. And now is the time to pray and fast and seek the Lord. Praise God, and he is with us all, and God bless you all. Peace be unto you.